welcome to the future. We're on full alert with an emergency special. A look at how science and technology will respond to tomorrow's disasters. Mayday, Mayday. It's high visibility on the high seas. A glowing SOS necklace lights up the night in an exciting air sea rescue. Imagine you've fallen overboard while out at sea. You're wearing a life jacket, but you've floated far away from your boat. You're now a tiny dot in the ocean. It's pretty hard for the emergency services to find you amongst the waves, and it's even worse in the dark. Just how would a rescue helicopter see you? Speed is vital in these emergencies because just 10 minutes in cold water can make you physically helpless. Jez Nelson joins Air Sea Rescue in Devon with a new device that could help find you faster. In a sea emergency, the Coast Guard battle to reach the victims in time. Trouble is, the bad weather that causes accidents at sea can also stop them from seeing someone in the water. It's a disturbing experience for the rescue services trying to save them. You know, we don't just go back and switch off. You go back and think, have we gone past this person? Did we not see him? And you'll get a sleepless night from it, and all the crew will go home and, and think about, did I see something? Did I not see something? And it's, it is frustrating. They reckon many people are lost because they're just not visible in the water. And the problem is much worse at night. The main difference between Finding somebody and not finding somebody is being able to see them visually. Many boats have locating devices and some sailors also wear personal radio beacons. But these can only bring the Coast Guard to within a few hundred metres of the person. Once there, it's still difficult to spot them, especially in the dark. But a simple new device might help. Fetching as it may be, this isn't the latest accessory for clubbers. No, it's the first device to combine a personal radio beacon with an automatic locating light. If you're wearing one of these, it's going to be much easier to spot you. The light is a strap that goes around your neck. It's also the radio antenna, so the claim is it can be detected from any angle. We're going to try out the new device as soon as it gets dark and see whether it can help the emergency services reach someone stranded at sea more quickly. Well, the light's starting to go now, and as soon as it does get properly dark, we're going to put this device to the test for the first time ever. And Reg, well, he's very bravely volunteered to wear the new device and throw himself off the uh, side of a boat. We're going to come looking for you, Reg. Nasty night for it, I think. It's not so good tonight. It's very cold as well. It's about nine degrees out there in the sea. And if you think Reg is brave, well, this is Dave. He's another Coast Guard. He's also going to be over the side of the boat, but he won't be wearing the new device. So me, well, I'll be up in the helicopter with the Coast Guard pilot looking for these guys and seeing whether we can get to Reg quicker with him wearing the new device. As night falls, Reg and Dave get ready. The lifeboats will be out with them in case we don't spot them from the helicopter. Roy, you're the main lookout on this rescue mission. Um, how are we going to find the guys once they're in the water? We're going to use a homing device in the aircraft uh, on the console. We'll home in uh, from the needle on the homer and then we'll visually locate him. So once we're there, we're in the rough area. It's just literally a case of looking out the side of the uh, helicopter then, trying to find them, is it? It is. Looking either side of the aircraft and hopefully one of us will spot him. Now Reggie's out at sea, he puts on the new light device. It's kept in place by the weight of the beacon. Meanwhile, we prepare for takeoff. Reg drops himself into the icy water. The device is activated automatically. The seawater completes an electric circuit and triggers both the light and the radio homing signal. All Dave has is the radio homing beacon. First, the radio signal takes us to an approximate location. OK, Roy, we know they're in the water, so have we got a signal yet? Yes, we have, actually. The homing device is picking up a signal now. OK, so how far away are they? Uh, it's, it's difficult to judge. We, uh, we have to use the homing device to get on top of them. Now we're closer, they use the helicopter's heat-detecting camera to search the water. 
doesn't always work in bad weather, but tonight we're lucky. They spot Reg and Dave as tiny dots. It's easy to imagine missing them if the water was choppy. Then it's down to the naked eye, and that's when we'll know whether the light really makes a difference. Hey, clear door whenever you want, Roy. Okay. Start looking out for us. Clear door, have your eyes outboard. Okay. So we must be very close now, we must be within about half a mile of them now, I guess. You're going to start looking out. Oh. Yep. And this is where the device should help. Well, so this is yet. really exciting now. We know that we're very close to an extremely strong signal. And Roy is just looking out. They've got floodlights on the bottom of the helicopter. We should be able to find them any moment. They've been in the water okay. for 10 minutes, so these guys must be getting very cold. I've got it, right. So that's it down there. That's what we reckon, yeah. We've got a target. So we think we spotted a target just down there. The device round Reggie's neck means we spot him pretty quickly. The light's electroluminescent, so it's much brighter than the light on a life jacket. From a helicopter, it should be easier on the eye than a strobe, and it should also last longer than a flare. The winchman's lowered to pull Reg out of the water. Reg is hoisted into the safety of the helicopter, but there's still no visible sign of Dave. The ten minutes are now up, so we're sending a lifeboat to pick him up. You're glad that's over. I am. It's really cold in there, even with his suit on. And I know how it feels to be a zombie fallen overboard. It feels hopeless. Well, well, we seem to find them, you know, fairly quickly there. So did the light help? Uh, yes, it did. Yes, the light, uh, the light shone out quite well. Oh, there's a lot of people around, sure. uh, which obscured a little bit. If, had he been on his own in blackness, he would have stood out even more. Because I heard the pilot saying that he spotted the light yeah. around him before uh, we saw him from this side, so yeah. it's obviously effective. Yes, it is effective, yeah. And we didn't find, I didn't see Dave, I mean, I know he's out there somewhere, he's okay, we should say that, but... I think uh, we're picking him up. We couldn't, we couldn't spot him, though, from up here, could we? Yeah. The device has yet to go through formal testing, but if it continues to impress, it might stop coastal emergencies turning into disasters. Because the device combines the light with current radio beacon technology, it can be picked up by the equipment already fitted in emergency rescue helicopters. If all goes to plan, the makers of the device hope it will be on sale in the next few months. London. And the very first Tomorrow's World Awards. And history in the making as we launch the Tomorrow's World Awards. We're here at the Tomorrow's World Live event to honour people whose innovative work is changing our lives. These awards will go to people whose ideas have most inspired us on the programme over the last year. We'll also be giving a special award for science communication. Our finalists are all here along with contributors to the programme and many of those working to push forward the frontiers of science and technology. An independent panel of judges has whittled the list of entries down to 15 and in the next half hour we'll hear their final decisions on a winner in each live the event. There's a special area where individual inventors can show their work. Making an invention commercially viable can be a lonely business and a long hard struggle. Our next award recognises those individuals who haven't had the backup of a big technical team but have worked alone to bring their innovations to life. And our three finalists have all been undaunted by working alone. They are David Marshall with a radio beacon collar for sailors, which will make locating them much easier if they fall into the sea. Chris Richardson, who's come up with an ingenious landmine detector that powers itself. And Detective Constable Gil Boyd, who supplied his Cambridgeshire police force with an air-to-ground video device. 
Many boats have locating devices and some sailors also wear personal radio beacons, but these can only bring the Coast Guard to within a few hundred meters of the person. Once there, it's still difficult to spot them, especially in the dark, but a simple new device might help. Fetching as it may be, this isn't the latest accessory for clubbers. No, it's the first device to combine a personal radio beacon with an automatic locating light. If you're wearing one of these, it's going to be much easier to spot you.